minutes. It's the line of the night. But Miss Kay, she is awesome. What a great mom. Um, I tell you what, we, um, I'm gonna give you the quick rundown. This is what I share with people everywhere, you know, that I go, and not just not just at speeches. So, I mean, you really have to believe me. We live this life every day. I've been at deer camp. I've been down there trying to chase deer ever since October 1st. And I think I've preached a sermon every day uh, at camp uh, with a bunch of different people. We've converted a lot of people. Uh, probably about 12 or 14 just since October 1st of just from this particular deer camp. Uh, we, uh, so I just look, I look for people, uh, I, just, I just listen to people, and then I offer to help them and however it is, whether it's with a marriage, whether it's with their sin, uh, whether, whatever it is, uh, the Bible says you always need to have an answer for the hope that you have. And so if you don't know passages, you don't know, you're like, I don't know what I would tell somebody if they were lost, then get, then get you a Bible and start to learn. This Bible goes with me everywhere. This is... Um, this is an old guy here, so it's taped together just to keep it together. But I study it and I read it, and not because uh, of Duck Dynasty, and not because that, that I want to know more than other people, because it has the answers to our lives. It has the answers to crappy marriages and kids that are terrible, and my sin is just ruining my life. It has the answers. And so I start out with 1 Corinthians 15, and because we need to know what the gospel is. And uh, right there, is what's going to save us. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. He said, I'm going to remind you of the gospel to the church in Corinth. I know we'll remind you of that. Jesus died, was buried, and was raised for our sins. And we start right there because that's the good news. That's the good news of Jesus to save people. It's so simple. I, I was talking to a guy, 72 year old guy, um, who's actually doing my line of barbecue sauce. And so, and if we're going to talk very long, we're going to get into the Bible. So we're going to end up talking about it. And I preached him this simple message, and then we went through the gospel, and then I went through the response to it, and I told him he really had needed to repent and change his life uh, from where he was. And when you know when you're 72, you know it's kind of hard to convince somebody 72 of anything. This guy's looking at we were on a plane ride, and uh, I'm telling him I said, uh, Yo, Leon, you can get baptized, come to the Lord, and live a whole new life. Romans 6 says there's a new life. And we talked about that new life. And old Leon had tears in his eyes. He said, Willie, I want you to baptize me. I said, well, I'll do it. Well, my, my chief security guy was, was with us. Well, he just listened to the conversation. So he called me, he said, Leon's ready. I said, great. He said, there'll be two of us. I said, two? Who's the other one? He said, I'm going in too. I said, well, I appreciate it. So we had one. So last year, we we're, we're, were at another deer camp. I was in Kansas, and so... Uh, I heard this guy talking and he just didn't sound like he was right and so he was taking me to the deer stand and I preached to him on the way to the deer stand so he drops me off and um, he said Willie I, I think I need to get baptized and I said hey sounds good I said well let me hunt and come pick me up go find me some water he said there's a cow pond right there it's 24 degrees in Kansas I thought Whoo. all right I said bro it'll be cold but we can do it he said, all right, so he drops me out. I, God would not let a buck deer come out in front of me that night, and I know why, because I couldn't be messing with that deer. So I didn't see a deer, he comes pick me up. He said, I brought you some waders. I was like, oh, thank you so much. That sucker stripped down to his underwear, and we went out in that cow pond, and it was only about that deep, but I didn't realize it. So I'm baptizing right here. Well, his face ain't going to go so I just shoved him in the mud. So he got a baptism of mud and water. He came up out of there. He looked like he had literally seen the devil or Jesus. I'm not sure. Probably just the cold water. And I think he walked on water as he ran out of that cow pond. And I was still sitting there laughing at him. And I get in the car. And, well, I have my camera guy with me for, for the deer, for Buck Commander. And so and I'm fired up. I'm like, that's what happened. You know, that's right out of the New Testament. And he goes, I don't think I know what exactly just happened. I don't know what that means. I started right there and preached him the gospel. So he said, but, now the cow pond was unbelievable, but is there anywhere warmer that I can go? So we went into LaRoche's house, he just built a new house, and we got in his bathtub, 
Now, let me tell you, if you're going to baptize them in a bathtub, it's like frying a turkey. You better stick the turkey in water and mark it on the pot because all that water will pour out and you don't want it to pour out. So we, we measured it out and then got him in there and baptized him. But I'm telling you, all we do this everywhere we go. And this is something that the Robertsons believe with all our heart. It's where it changes lives is one at a time. We can do it. We're able to do it through television and books and all that stuff. But just every day, whoever you're around, um, sharing something with them. There's people in your life, there's people that uh, God has put in front of you. Do you have that message? Uh, which way are you going? Are you the one that your buddy says, I need to talk to that guy? Or are you the one who needs to bring somebody to him? And we all struggle. And we all have those times where we're down or whatever. But man, it's so encouraging. When God says to go to church, he said... It was about being, it said it was to encourage one another. It didn't even say to worship and all that. It says to encourage. I want to encourage you guys. If you're not in God, if you're not in the Lord, if you're sitting there going, what is he talking about? I, I just watched Doug Nasty and I think it's funny. I don't know about all that other stuff. We're all about all the other stuff, okay? The other stuff is a side drop. We are all about bringing people to the Lord in any way we can. And I just want to encourage you. Um, from, our, from the family of West Monroe, from Doug Dowsty, I'm here to encourage you to continue to keep standing for your faith. We'll keep doing it in Hollywood. We'll keep doing it in New York with the media, with the press, and all that. But I want to encourage you to continue to stand for your faith. Um, lastly, I wanted to... Uh, I'm not crying. I'm just, I just need a drink of water. Um, but I could cry. I'll be crying when I'm watching Sadie again. So when, when I'm watching the first night, I start crying. I'm like, oh, shoot. I get texts. I look down. Chase, he said, Willie, do not panic, but they have you full screen crying on TV right now. <laughs> I text back. I said, Chase, I know. I see the camera right in front of my face. It just kind of happened. So I just want to encourage you guys. I will say uh, I've, I've been out. Uh, our little brother Jeff's in the hospital, so I just want you to know he's doing great. He's doing, if you'll see it, it'll be on the media. But um, he is doing great, so uh, he's doing a lot better, and uh, we're expecting a full recovery. So, uh, uh, But I will just ask you to pray for him. Uh, my brothers and sisters here, keep him in your prayers uh, to pray for Jeff, and uh, but he's doing a lot better uh, now. So. Uh, no, my father wasn't. See, that's where that's where you got to watch the media. That was Sadie's grandfather was in the hospital. He's doing great now. That was, uh, I don't guess anybody realized, she has two grandfathers. So one is Phil, one is John. So that was John, but it wasn't Phil. So there you go. No, because no, everybody thought that. No, John got a kick out of it. He thought it was funny. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I've had such fun talking to you, hanging out with you. Keep supporting what these guys are doing here because we're making a real change and a real difference here in Central Florida. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. I'm heading back to Baton Rouge to go to the game, so uh, I'm pulling for my Tigers. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.